G'day, my name's Tom from Shaw and welcome to the next edition of the Shaw Whiteboard Series. In this edition, we're going to cover how to coordinate a wireless system or, as it's otherwise known, frequency coordination. So the first fundamental thing about coordinating your wireless system is that each receiver can only receive a radio signal from one transmitter at a time. Uh, so if you need two transmitters going, you're going to need two receivers uh, tuned to separate frequencies. If you were to tune both of these microphones to the same frequency as this receiver, then you're going to get interference on this receiver. And secondly, if you tune both receivers onto the same frequency of transmitter one, then both receivers will receive the same stream of audio. The next thing to remember when coordinating your system is to always adhere to the minimum frequency separation. Uh, so this represents a frequency that's currently on air at the moment, um, and as you can see, this represents a, a low RF strength level, moving up to a high one, and then back down to a low one. So the, the closest that we can put a second transmission will depend upon the quality of the system, because the, the amount of RF that each particular wireless system uh, uses will depend upon its overall quality. So the kind of RF footprint, if you like, of a lower end system will be slightly wider than that of a higher end system. Thus, for a given amount of spectrum, you can stack frequencies closer together for a high end system when compared to a lower end system. The next thing to bear in mind is actually where to tune your radio mic because you want to make, you make sure you have a nice clean noise floor and you're operating in nice clean spectrum to give you good solid range. Here is my little quick art attack of what your spectrums having, or spectrum might look like having just done a quick scan. So this section here is the noise floor. This is the lowest noise or RF noise rather that your current receiver can pick up and um, ascertain to what's going on. These blocks here represent DTV or digital television and a nice eight megahertz wide band of noise. And these little lines here represent uh, existing radio mics that may be on air in your local area or maybe in the, the room or, or a little venue next door. Everything that isn't DTV, noise floor or other radio transmissions would be considered white space. So it's in these gaps here, here, in this sections here and here and here they'd be considered the white space that you could potentially tune your radio mic onto. So this is an example of where you might find some white space. Now, us as humans can just look at a graph and know where the white space is, but we can't ever just know where it actually is in the real world. We're going to need our receiver to do some form of scan for us. Now, the entry level systems usually have just a scan button. You press that once and it will find the next clean available frequency for you. The slightly more advanced systems have the ability to scan the entire tunable bandwidth, that is the radio spectrum that those guys can access in its full bandwidth. So they'll scan from say 606 megahertz up to 666 megahertz, looking at every single spot frequency along the way. Having done that, they'll be able to perform a test to see which is the best frequency for you to use. So let's assume we've got a 10-way radio system, as you can see I've got here with my nice antennas and I've cascaded all the antenna outputs down through all the, all the receiver sections. We have, in our shore systems, a system called uh, groups and channels built into all of our systems. And these are the aims to help you coordinate your system because you can't randomly tune onto random frequencies because you might find a frequency clash, you might have tuned within the minimum frequency separation, or you might have uh, stumbled across an intermod inadvertently. So we arrange all of our groups or all of our frequencies into predetermined groups and channels. Now, all of the channels within a given group are known to be compatible with each other. Like I said, observing the minimum frequency separation and avoiding intermodulation distortion. So if I was to go take this radio rack to the Kalahari Desert, I know that I could tune all my receivers into group one and onto different channels within that group. I'd turn on the rack and be guaranteed absolutely uh, no uh, frequency issues whatsoever. Some groups are full bandwidth, some are limited to just channel 38 or just channel 40 or just channel 45, but it depends on what you're using to depend on which group you should use. 
Also bear in mind that there is no uh, compatibility guaranteed amongst different groups. So I might have these four in group one and these six in group two. That's not gonna guarantee you a clean bunch of frequencies. So we just established that if you're gonna be tuning multiple radio systems together, you should stick them in the same group, but within different channels within that group. But that's only true if you're using one type of system. So this is my awesome radio rack that I drew a moment ago. I've just also drawn an awesome PSM in a monitoring Mac. Uh, these systems will all have a group one, they'll all have a group two and all have a group three, but there's no guaranteed compatibility, in fact, Group one, channel one for this kit, may, exact, may even be the same spot frequency for group one, channel one on the PSM kit. So if we're doing it in this way, we're definitely gonna need some form of advanced coordination or a custom coordination. So the best way to do your custom coordination is by using some coordination software, probably Shure Wireless Workbench 6 software. This software allows you to firstly uh, add in your items to your inventory, i.e. my 10 ways of radio plus three ways of in-in monitoring systems. Do a scan of the, the local area to see what the radio situation is like. And then the software knows the tuning characteristics of this radio system and my in-in monitoring system. And will take into account all of the parameters of what these bits of kit are capable of and tune around any sources of interference as well. It will then generate a custom list of frequencies for you. And you'll be able to tune your radio kit onto those frequencies. Bear in mind that in this instance, you might tune onto uh, different channels within different groups. So this might be on group two, channel one, and group seven, channel 14. In this instance, that's totally okay because the system has done the coordination for you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's Shaw Whiteboard series. For more information about coordinating your wireless system, please feel free to come down to one of our wireless master sessions or perhaps some of our wireless Workbench 6 training. There's another video coming up next week and to make sure you don't miss out on it, please subscribe to us at losingyourvoice.co.uk. Thanks. So we know that if you're using a bunch of radio kit, you should tune it all into the same channel. That's a lie. <laughs>